Lots of other good stuff that we're going to talk about today. But first, some boring stuff. <laughs> Kickstarter, <laughs> Pickstarter. No, it's not boring. It's great. Please lead us off with this game that is not developed by Sandy Peterson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> called Mothership. This game is developed by Peter uh, Sanders. Peter Sanderson. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and said, the game was is a space uh, warship game where you control fleet. And it's really cool because it has like a you have a, your own upgrade tree, so everyone can upgrade to fit whatever they want their playing style. And also, you can actually divert energy, you know, to shields, to thrusters, you know, sort of like you know when you see in Star Trek when the captain goes like divert all energy to engines so we can blast through. So right. you can do that. Uh, but the thing that I thought really made it interesting is the game was designed in mind with the idea of how a lot of games when you have rolled dice for combat and stuff, last five or six hours, you know, halfway through, someone's going to watch TV, <laughs> someone else is trying to understand the rule book. You uh -huh. know? So Never it's, good. The idea was to sort of be able to have those mechanics, but keep it within like a much short, you know, reasonable time frame, and in space. Uh -huh. So I thought that was a really good goal to go strive for. And it's there's a lot of little ship minis in yep. this, right? Uh, this I think the base goes for 49 and for uh, four players, a lot of different ships. You still get, the, like I said, that customization with the tech tree and like changing your energy outputs. And plus there's like a random card system to help. So if you don't want to throw all your energy into shields. You don't have to. Right. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, it's uh, like primarily, like you were saying, dice dice combat. And do you know, is the board, is it a set board? Is it's, it yeah, it's, well... It's sort of, it's like a space tile, like, you know, hexagons, I think it is, or maybe squares. Yeah. But you can put asteroids and, like, planets okay. and stuff, so you can conquer planets, you know, avoid asteroids, stuff. so yeah, modular in that cool. sense. It looks good, and I, yeah. I think it was, I think that one was funded already, right, or close to it? I do not think it was funded, oh, as of yeah. this recording, but... I don't know. I see, I'm from the future. <laughs> oh, future, tell me, what should I have for lunch? Not pastrami. Oh no! That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Uh, so that's that's Mothership, and we love alliteration on this show, which is why next we're going to Mobster Metropolis. Uh, this is, if you couldn't tell, a game about gangsters in the twenties. Uh, there have been, you know, some of these out in the wild. This one, I feel like, though, is really has is trying to be like the ultimate <laughs> mobster game like it has everything you might want to do it actually remind me a little bit of dominion not dominion uh, dominant species i mean ah uh huh interesting well the thing about so the board is you know like a city space and you have different territories and properties and yeah then on the side they call it a smart board i'm not sure what's so smart about it it's <laughs> a smart board it, what they the reason to call it a smart board and this yeah. is what made me think of like dominant species it's pretty much yeah. the you go through each action Right, right. In so order. It's, it, it's pretty much a keep track of where you are. But unlike Downward Species, it's not, I don't think it's worker placement. It's well, it's not worker placement, choosing actions, but the way it works. Everybody does every action. Yeah. And what I like is the way the, you mentioned territories, the way that actually works is there'll be a bunch of, like a, a, a block or so, a couple blocks of streets. Right. With like, they can fit spaces. And you have tiles. So you have to try to also fit them into certain things like, so I thought that was also really cool. Like yeah, the casino's mm -hmm. a little bigger. Yeah, a li little bit of a tetris kind then of Then everyone puts down, which I also thought was cool, these hidden tiles, which either means the place makes more money or you put down bodyguards. But people don't know what you put down. Oh, right, right, right. And, and then there's also like a... There's a just part where you're doing a drive-by, and that's and then there's also a part where you're you put out money to like bribe cops. And yeah, all the way that actually works hidden. is yeah, it's pretty much that's what it really cool is. A lot of it's hidden. Uh, the bribing part works is everyone has their money, puts in a fist, reveals <laughs> highest person who, who pays the most of the cops. You know, the cops reward that person. Right. But whoever pays the lowest, the cops don't like, so they actually punish that person. <laughs> so there, yeah, there's a lot of elements of sneakishness. <laughs> that's not a word. Sneakery. And uh, and uh, trickery, uh, which yeah, which is which fits into the theme, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and and the art is really cool too. I, I like it. it has a very in a unique. No, style. I do really think it captured what I like because it's trickery. Because when you think of the 1920s, you know, mob, I do think of that, like while there were the drive-by shootings and stuff, you know, you do think a lot of it is sort of that cloak and dagger kind of dealing and stuff mm, like, for but sure. territory control, like you know. You know this is this group's territory, but you don't see like you know the gangs out walking on the street. You just know it's there. Right. It's like <laughs> you just know, man. Word on the street. That one goes for sixty-one dollars, I believe, which is a little heftier. A little heftier. But I mean, considering all the components it comes with, I think it's over six hundred pieces. 
I think it's said. There's some pieces in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next is uh, one I'm curious to hear you talk about. Plague Inc. Incorporated. Right. Uh, this game uh, is pretty much you play, you, everyone starts as a disease. Like a basic little common cold Just like, like I real have. life. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, but you're, you you're living it right now. Yes, you're I'm LARPing. literally living it. <laughs> I, that's how much I like it. I, I'm trying to capture the spirit. Um, but, and you start like in places like Madagascar and other places like that. But the idea is you try to spread and you grow by evolving. So you, maybe your disease starts giving like, you know, uh, becomes airborne. Maybe it actually gives like diarrhea is one of the cards they have actually have it there. Love it. And these things actually make it so you're more likely to be able to survive in a hotter place or it's easier for you to spread more huh. or you're more lethal. So like these really cool kind of things. Yeah, it sounds but, pretty scary. <laughs> so you try to spread, you know, take over the world and but you could all what oh you could also do is play events on each other. So it's not just evolving yourself. You could be like Oh, you know that city? They didn't like that, so they bombed it. So, like, the, uh, everything died in that city, so you didn't get points for capturing it and stuff. Is that, that, that's random? No, like, or you, like, I, yeah. If you... One of them is nuclear strike. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so it's like you, you get to affect your opponents by playing as the humans. Huh. Which is sort of cool if you think about it. Yeah, no, that is, that is pretty good. <laughs> and I thought that was just really fun. I think it's uh, what we, what I would have wanted out of the pan, what was it pandemic, pandemic out, contagion right we felt like well that was fun you know it really it was sort of just it's very, very simple yes. a little bit derivative this gets a lot more of the playing as the bacteria as that sort of killing everything and evolving to the perfect pathogen that sounds cool yeah so i thought it was really <laughs> cool i know it's way funded uh, uh yeah it goes for just 30 dollars i hope there's expansions because i want like I want like crazy diseases. I want the Planet of the Apes disease and the, I don't know, <laughs> other but diseases. Yeah, I thought it was definitely something to check out if you enjoy that kind of evolution or territory control. Check that out. And finally, this one we talked about actually when it was first announced. It is This War of Mine, which is based on the video game. Uh, so you can hear our full thoughts on it on an earlier episode, but we'll kind of touch on it because the one thing that I actually thought is worth bringing up again is actually seeing, you know, what it's going to actually look like this time. And it looks awesome. How incredibly s similar it looks actually to the computer game. Like that board is literally what you see in it's the game. Th I think it works well too. On the, on the board, yeah, because that game is so already so similar to a board game, you know, strategically. Uh, it it kind of just makes sense that translation and uh, seeing seeing all the, and the all the pieces. So this this game goes for seventy two dollars, which is the more than any of the ones we talked about today. But it do, it does look really cool, <laughs> and I really kind of want it. <laughs> I definitely want to try it out. The fact that it's full co op and the it sounds like the discussions of uh, you know the intense like mm -hmm. decisions that you have to make like there were in the game of like oh we need to eat but these. Poor old people want some food too. Oh no, we, no they die. What do you do? <laughs> right? Yeah, like really cool. And the way, just the way that they translated the game so directly is interesting because you know we're seeing Dark Souls and Bloodborne, where it's not possible to do that kind of a direct translation. Uh, I don't know. We have not played unless you've ever seen it. Civilization, the board game. I have not. I'm. I, that's probably pretty similar too because that. That is also, again, I wonder if it really game. captures that spirit of, like, uh, I'm almost done with my Eiffel Tower. Uh-oh, oh, France already built it. Scrap it. <laughs> right. But it, you already... No, scrap it. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, Gandhi's here. <laughs> Everybody get out. <laughs> um, yeah, so th this War of Mine looks really cool. If I'd almost say buy the Steam game for, like, 10 bucks or whatever as a demo <laughs> for this because that's how, that's how similar it looks. Also, it comes with a book. Like a hundred page book of different stuff that can happen. Like there's a lot in this, this game. This game looks like it's right up your alley. It's this war of mine. It will be mine. It will be mine someday. <laughs>